Uh, thank you, Mr. Victor Goh, President, China Shopping Center Development Association of Mall China, for organizing this conference in spite of the challenge faced by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, thank you for this opportunity for us to share our experiences in living with COVID-19 uh, challenges in Malaysia. So uh, to start, uh, just a short introduction of uh, the scenario in um, Malaysia of uh, shopping malls. Uh, the total number of shopping malls in Malaysia is counted as 698. Uh, the definition of shopping malls is that uh, it includes hypermarket centers and retail podiums with a minimum of 50,000 square feet, but excludes supermarkets and other retail formats that operates in shop, shop houses or shop lots. The retail space of uh, shopping malls, including shop, shops, uh, street shops, is 176 million square feet table area and the estimated number of employees is 60,000. Uh, these figures will look very small compared to China, that's for sure. Okay, uh, the situation in Malaysia with regards to COVID-19. The first case was detected in January 2020. The movement control order, which is the name given by our government, to control movement and, uh, and uh, to try and uh, contain the COVID spread was imposed since 18th of March 2020 in various forms as we progress, a certain relaxation was given over time. And now we are in uh, the phase called Recovery Movement Control Order, RMCO which have just been extended from 31st September, 30th September, oh, sorry, it's 31st August to 31st December 2020. There's so many extensions, I have lost track. Currently, the situation is considered under control, but not stable, because now and then we have outbreaks, or we call it cluster outbreaks, and uh, the latest being one in uh, the northern region of Malaya, Malaysia and also in Sarawak. However, we are glad to note that with the various series of uh, relaxation along the way, most businesses are now allowed to open with the exception of pubs and nightclubs. Basically, because uh, these are congregation where it is difficult to comply with SOP, especially when you have a good uh, custom, customer demand for the, for the evening or for the weekend. Okay, uh, the next slide will show that uh, our original first phase of the movement control order is, is uh, from 18 of March to 3rd of May 2020. Uh, and at the time, only malls, uh, uh, only essential services, uh, basically the supermarkets, the pharmacy, uh, the FMB outlets for takeaway only uh, are allowed to be operated in the mall. This phase is uh, quite challenging to the mall operator because the mall operator has to more or less switch on all the facilities like aircon, car parking, lighting, security, uh, and uh, clean, uh, hygiene and cleaning for the whole mall because uh, because of the tenant mix, uh, we have we have F and B lots spread all over the whole shopping center, so we have to more or less keep the whole shopping center open and accessible. Then uh, in, uh, on the 4th of May to 9th of June onwards, uh, they relax it by calling it conditional movement control order, 
or CMCO. The malls are allowed to open almost fully, except for some business category that were deemed still not safe to do so. This is quite a good relief uh, because um, most uh, operations can happen. And, uh, uh, it, but uh, however, it took time for people to start to restart the business. So we came on to the recovery movement control order phase from 10th of June to 31st of August. This is the time most of the allowable businesses have uh, restarted and uh, opened for business. And this is the time where we can see some, re some significant uh, uh, footfall coming in from the public, the shop. And uh, we are now in uh, the extended of extension of the recovery movement control order. And uh, as I said earlier, all businesses are now allowed to be operated except for pubs and nightclubs. Uh, what is most important in determining whether uh, a business can open was the SOP, the standard operating procedures that is implemented with each type of business. And uh, for the mall operator, we have to make sure, our SOP is basically to ensure that uh, shoppers come into the shopping mall, have their temperature taken, and have their QR code uh, registered so that uh, we know that uh, where they have been and uh, they have come to the shopping center and in case or any COVID uh, cases detected, it's the, the data collected can allow the government to trace where a, 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 a patient uh, has gone to and what who, who they have contacted so that uh, we can uh, check whether all his contacts uh, along the way also uh, have COVID or have contacted COVID. Uh, we are glad that our government uh, have uh, also recognized that uh, the movement control have impacted very severely on businesses and the government introduced several stimulus packages along the way to help uh, reduce the impact on uh, businesses. I think the main consideration is to make sure that uh, there will be the least amount of uh, retrenchment and uh, do not increase the unemployment uh, ratio to be unacceptable. So on the 27th of March, the government have introduced the first economic stimulus package uh, worth our Malaysian $250 billion, which is equivalent to the US $62 billion. On the 6th of April, additional uh, stimulus package was introduced, more uh, directed at the small and medium enterprises because it is felt that this category of businesses have the highest chance of failure and the highest impact on their business. So the government introduced a US 2.5 billion package to help this small medium enterprises. Some of the notable uh, stimulus or assistance are one, discount on electricity bills. Malls, fortunately, uh, are given up to 15% discount on the electricity bill. This is a very important uh, item because electricity bill, as you all know, is a very big expense item in operating a mall. So this 15% reduction or discount is indeed a very good relief and help a lot with our cash flow. The government also introduced wage subsidies meant to help people retain jobs and uh, employers not to retrench. Uh, anybody who was earning less than Malaysian Ringgit 4,000 per month uh, were, were, were eligible for the, for, the, for the company to 
enjoy some uh, assistance where the government give up to $800 uh, per month uh, to the employer to help retain and pay for the salaries of the employee. The thing is that uh, the government will only afford up to 200 employees per company. And uh, we have actually uh, uh, been lobbying the government there that uh, big or small companies also have, this, have, have uh, been negatively impacted by this COVID-19 pandemic and that uh, all, all companies need assistance. So uh, the government relaxed it by uh, increasing the threshold of 200 employees to more than 200, but uh, the amount of subsidy given, or which subsidy given was reduced for the 20, 201st employee uh, from $800 to $600. So it is still better than uh, not getting any. So we are very grateful to the government for accepting our, our plea and also the, for the government to realize that uh, we need, we need help in that sense. Okay. Uh, the other one uh, was that, the, which was very, very helpful for a lot of businesses, is a moratorium on loan installments and bank interest. Up to 31st of September this year, uh, we do not need to repay any loan installments and bank interest. Although these are accumulated for future, uh, future payment uh, for future uh, installments, but uh, it is indeed a good relief because uh, it really impact on our cash flow, uh, assists us in our cash flow. So it is a very good uh, assistance given by the government for for this uh, uh, moratorium. The other thing is uh, the tax relief for rental rebates. Uh, the government has been encouraging the, the landlord to give away uh, rental discounts to, to the tenants. And uh, the threshold was that uh, only SME tenants are eligible for this uh, rental rebate. Or, or landlords are only eligible for this rental, uh, for this tax relief for rental rebates given only to SME tenants. So this is a, a bit of a, a challenge to us because as I said earlier, big or small tenants, big or small operators are all impacted one way or another by this COVID-19 pandemic. The other threshold imposed on to enjoy this tax relief is that uh, we, the landlord must give at least 30 uh, percent rental discounts to the to the tenants so uh this two threshold uh, has restricted quite a lot of uh, tax relief that the uh, landlord can enjoy but basically this tax relief is that for every hundred ringgit uh, of tax of, of rental reduction we give our tax saving is Bring it twenty four dollars, so the the landlord still has to bear this uh, seventy six dollar difference. So it is still quite a painful uh, thing for the landlord to bear, but uh, it is a burden we have to share together with the tenants. So the other impact on the shopping tourism is is the impact on tourism. As you all know, uh, tourists entry to Malaysia and also in many countries is the same, uh, has, has been uh, forbidden. So uh, business is really, really very badly impacted because there's, we can almost say zero tourist entry into Malaysia during this time. What is the most impactful is that uh, tourism spending in Malaysia or tourism income in Malaysia is our second biggest revenue generator for our GDP. 
So stopping the tourist trade has a very high impact on the government, uh, on the country's GDP. Second impact is that the tourist spending budget in Malaysia for shopping is 34% of their spending. So without the tourist spending in shopping, uh, the impact on shopping center is quite significant. Until today, our country's uh, borders are still closed. We don't expect it to open until the second quarter of next year. So, uh, it has been recorded that the tourist arrival and spending has declined by 75% uh, compared to 2019. The 25% was the first few months of the year, I reckon. Uh, otherwise, after the, the COVID, uh, it, uh, uh, our MCO uh, was in place, uh, zero tourism from overseas have come in. So the other revenue, the other avenue we can look for in tourism is domestic tourism. And the government has uh, recognized that uh, without international tourists, we have to develop our domestic tourism. And the government has been quite quick to introduce that personal income tax relief uh, of up to ringgit 1000 uh, for individuals who spend on tourism products uh, for the year up to 31st December 2021. So uh, a lot of our local uh, citizens who have actually budgeted to travel overseas and cannot do so have now turned their attention to local destination which is a very good opportunity because uh, most of us have not seen a lot of our country uh, and we probably have seen more international destination than our own destination. So it's a good forced uh, focus back on uh, the, the attractions and uh, the uh, des good destination for tourists, even for our local people. So it is also a good opportunity to do so, and we are glad that our local people have uh, taken that up, and um, a lot of resort hotels and tourist destinations in Malaysia are doing quite good business, especially during the weekends. Uh, the overall ho hotel occupancy, as expected, is increasing a bit from 21% in July to 30% in August. It is actually a bit of seasonal, a bit of school holiday, and a bit of uh, school being closed. And also because of this uh, uh, tax uh, relief for traveling to tourist, local tourist destination that helps to boost up this uh, uh, occupancy of hotels. But the feature to note is that uh, resort hotels within Malaysia are, are, are getting most of the advantages. Uh, local city hotels, down, downtown hotels are still uh, experiencing very low occupancy because they depended a lot on international tourists and also on businesses. And business travel is, is also very limited at the moment. So it is expected that uh, the, the uh, tourist destination hotels, the resort hotels, would continue to do better, uh, fueled by domestic tourism uh, demands. Uh, let's turn to look at some of the impact on the annual retail sales. The extension of the RMCO until 31st December is expected to delay the recovery of the retail industry, dragging the annual performance down by 9.3% from an earlier forecast of 8.7%. Um, it is unfortunately uh, expected extension and we believe it is quite necessary for this extension. So we cannot uh, complain about it as such. Huh? However, the 9.3% contraction is uh, quite impactful from 
the retail sales figures from uh, 24.4 billion uh, down to 24.4 billion from what we expected of 24.6 billion. The sales for the sub sectors uh, that have uh, been impacted um, most drastic is department stores, 62.3 percent, followed by fashion and fashion accessories, specialty retail stores, department stores come supermarkets, uh, the pharmacy and personal care, and even supermarkets and hypermarkets, uh, which is quite a surprise because uh, during this time, a lot of people have to go up to the supermarket to shop for the daily needs. And our wet market, our other markets that are not in shopping malls, uh, were closed for a long time. And even though now it's open, the, the people patronizing them has reduced in preference to shopping in supermarkets, in shopping centers, basically in consideration for convenience and uh, hygiene and standards of uh, hygiene. So we, I'm surprised by this figure, but uh, that is a figure that we got. That there is a drop even in supermarkets of up to 9.9%. Okay, are there any signs of recovery for retail? The retail sector uh, is expected to recover in the second half of 2020, basically from uh, local consumption. The sales likely to recover to 80% to pre-COVID level in the fourth quarter from current 70%. Uh, the small sectors of the economy, including the service industry reopened, uh, we are glad to note that the, the unemployment figure has also improved. Uh, and uh, at the moment, we are enjoying 4.9% from a record high of 53 uh, but uh, it must be noted that in the pre-COVID time, our unemployment rate is over around 3 to 3.5% 3 only. So it is still uh, increasing unemployment figures. Our bank, our, our government bank, national bank, uh, forecast a contraction of our gross domestic product to 5.5%. Uh, after contracting from 17.1% uh, in the second quarter. So it is still in a contraction mode and uh, it shows in, in our, our business uh, projections and our business uh, income and revenue. Well, um, where are we now? As of May 2020, uh, when we were first able to open for business, apart from essential services, less than 10% 10, 10 of the shops were open, only less than 10% of the footfall were recorded, and the sales was uh, very small. Uh, there was almost no figure to, to compare. Basically, at that time, people only came to do shopping at the super, supermarkets and buy their medical needs uh, at the pharmacies uh, and take away our food uh, most of the time. Uh, but the takeaway figure was also very low because at the time, a lot of people order through deliveries. So the takeaway figure was also pretty low. By June, where 70 to 80 percent of the shops were open, uh, the footfall was uh, still low at 40 to 50 percent, and the percentage of sales was 20 to 30 percent. Came July, we increased to 30 to 90 percent, 95 percent of shops opening. Footfall had come back to 75 percent, but sales was quite sticky at 50 percent. Because uh, basically people are very conscious about um, uh, spending uh, money because we don't know how long this pandemic will last. And secondly is that uh, the, because of the standard operating procedures, where, when you enter a shop 
every shop you have to take your temperature, you have to register your QR or register in a, in a physical form by writing in a book. And because there were limited number of people allowed into a, into a shop at any one time, he created queues outside. And a lot of people couldn't be bothered to queue. So they, they give the shopping a miss in, in spite of their coming to the shopping center. Uh, and that is a, that, that's the, the pain we, we had to, to do, we had to suffer. And also because of the SOP, all the F&B outlets uh, have their seating reduced uh, by almost 50%. Most of them reported about 40% to be able to meet the SOP of social distancing. distancing. Therefore, the shop, the, in the, the sales in, the, in this F&B outlet is also impacted uh, quite badly because of the capacity limitations. In August, the number of shops opening is still 90-95%. We believe this figure will stay, it will not improve very much because um, apart from the normal vacancy uh, with, uh, with shops uh, changing hands, uh, some of the shops are, are closed permanently. So this figure will be pretty sticky and will remain so for some time possible. Food, although food traffic has also uh, in, uh, retained at about 75%, uh, the sales have also been keeping to about 50 to 60%. The footfall has uh, kept at 75% basically because uh, people are still not fully confident to come out to for leisure shopping. So most of the shoppers come out basically for essential shopping. And uh, we have noticed that uh, the shopper uh, behavior has changed also uh, with the shoppers being younger and uh, there are less family crowd. Basically, uh, the family uh, parents are considered to be high, uh, what they call, uh, high in risk group. And uh, the children are also uh, recommended not to come to the shopping center. The younger shoppers are a bit more gung ho, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, they cannot be confined to the home for too long. So we have now got a, a younger crowd of shoppers. They are spending shorter times, uh, shorter by about two and a half hours to three to one and a half hours. Uh, Basically, because uh, like I said earlier, uh, they will not do uh, browsing kind of shopping, uh, the unnecessary queuing outside every shop, the hassle of temperature taking, uh, do distract them from uh, staying longer. And uh, the percentage of visit to suburban neighborhood more have increased because uh, that's where people go for the essentials and uh, to the destination of shopping, where they go in and buy exactly what they know they need to buy. The city mall are still uh, having lower footfalls because, uh, like I say, uh, the shopping for fashion and uh, uh, shopping for browsing, shopping, and that uh, is not uh, back to normal. So, therefore, most of the mall. Visitations are functional, usually for food, food and beverages, grocery and personal care items. We are lucky that we have some uh, carefree spending purchase. Uh, we call it release because you don't want to stay at home for too long and come out to socialize with your friends and also revenge. Uh, a word I think very commonly used in China and which is adopted here. So fashion, as, as expected, is of less priority, and uh, the shop, the shop, the, the uh, average uh, spend has dropped thirty four percent for fashion itself. In this time, uh, during the MCO, uh, e commerce has actually picked up a lot. Online has picked up a lot, 
especially for goods, for food, for food essentials. Uh, this is a, going to a new norm and it's going to cut into the people coming to shopping center. Uh, we hope that uh, this e-commerce and online orders will be confined to food and essential uh, items. Frequency of, each, of visits current has been recorded to drop, to have dropped from 3.8 to 2.9 per month. Basically, as, as we, shoppers come only for essential shopping and uh, not for socializing so much and not for browsing kind of shopping. And we realize that uh, the shoppers are more conscious about hygiene and sanitation of the mall. So the irony part is that uh, before COVID, we do all our cleaning and our uh, uh, hygiene and, uh, and, and uh, washing uh, after, after shopping hours. But because of COVID, we have reversed the trend and now we want to be seen to be cleaning uh, frequently and uh, and uh, ensuring that uh, people are, the cleaners are being seen and, and they are really uh, carrying out all these cleaning jobs uh, diligently and, all, and more frequently and visibly. So the, the, the COVID-19 have changed the pattern of when we clean our shopping malls. Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, what are the marketing strategies that um, that uh, we have to look at. Huh? I think the most important part is to see how to increase the confidence of people uh, to come out to shop. And uh, we have uh, to find ways to show that it is safe and good to, and okay to come out to shop. Uh, by, of course, um, as I said earlier, showing that we are really cleaning the place up and sanitizing the, the, the malls more frequently and more recently. Uh, the government have helped to restart domestic tourism and to complement the government, we are also uh, launching this uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, buy Malaysian product campaign and Malaysian sales campaign uh, to first help our Malaysian local manufacturers and retailers uh, by buying more Malaysian products, uh, encouraging more sales uh, uh, through campaigns, uh, and. Uh, Some of the things we do for the sales campaign is through, through uh, giving away cash shopping vouchers and other goodies to entice people to come to the mall. Okay, uh, other marketing and promotion uh, activities. Uh, shopping malls, Uh, the key to recovery, we have to be more creative and uh, introduce more sales um, attractions to bring people back to the mall. We want to emphasize that the mall is a community gathering place, a socializing place, and uh, we have to have promotions and events that uh, is sympathetic to this uh, community gathering, socializing uh, uh, a space for, for and activities to bring the people to come to the mall. Uh, now, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, shopping per se for fashion and for clothes have been uh, being de-emphasized a bit 
and F&B and experiential attractions are increasingly more important as a tenant mix or activity mix the shopping center. So some of the things which we introduce is skydiving, uh, flow rider, which is a, a simulated uh, wave uh, for skiing, water skiing, uh, introduced by the malls, uh, other things like uh, uh, more children play areas are introduced to entice uh, families to come. So uh, other things uh, we have done is um, like uh, Sunway. Sunway had came up with a few different packages for the different malls. They, they run uh, several malls and some of the things they have done is um, to do package deals like a two days, one night stay in your hotel, which is attached to the shopping mall, giving out dining vouchers for people to dine in. And, and one of the most interesting one is that uh, where there are malls is attached to a medical center, they give basic health screening uh, for their shoppers, which is a very, very unique and a very interesting uh, introduction to encourage people to come to the mall, especially now, most of us would like to know our health status in this pandemic time. So it is quite a quite a imaginative uh, mix of, uh, of attractions for people to come to the mall. Uh, where there is, um, they have this uh, Sunway Lagoon, uh, they have introduced Combine tickets where you stay, shop, and go to the uh, lagoon, Sunway Lagoon, uh, as a package. So this all very imaginative and very successful uh, packages that they have introduced. And uh, these are the things we, as other mall operators, have to start thinking out of the box to try and uh, create this kind of good value, good offer kind of uh, packages. Okay, uh, the retail platform, uh, as I said, the online platform is uh, going to be here. During the pandemic, uh, the online business has actually grown by leaps and bounds, some reporting up to 500% increase. So uh, the mall operators would have to look at this as one of their channels or retail uh, to complement the brick and mortar malls they have. So these are the things we, sh we should look at. Uh, we have to introduce uh, adoption of technology, uh, facial scanners, smart mirrors, uh, as part of the SOP to, to, uh, to take temperatures and record temperatures, record uh, visitations, even car number plate recognition to make it more convenient for, for people to park and do not need to go and look for a machine to pay their parking fee are all good things to be introduced to make visitations to the mall uh, not only convenient but less need for contact with uh, people especially during this pandemic era and uh, of course um, a lot of pop-up shops are now being uh, introduced uh, for giving new attractions and new uh, formats for people to enjoy and to experience. Some of the digitization uh, exercise uh, uh, introductions uh, have been uh, introducing e-wallets to the malls. Uh, for instance, uh, we have uh, one Utama shopping center introduce a e wallet for all the tenants uh, to use and uh, to capture the e wallet business within a mall rather than a third party e wallet uh, platform. Uh, also, malls are introducing um, loyalty cards that 
are open to all the tenants of the mall exclusively so that it become a good ecosystem for people to come to the mall where their, their points they earn can be used in any of the other tenants uh, space uh, outlets uh, rather than a dedicated loyalty program for a particular tenant where you have to go back to the same tenant to spend the points, the loyalty points you earn. So, so some of these are some of the things that uh, uh, as we introduce to uh, capture the, the loyalty for all tenants within the mall rather than uh, third party loyalty programs or uh, single tenant loyalty program. So hopefully uh, it makes it more attractive for people to come back to the mall to shop knowing that they can use the, the loyalty points for all the shops within the mall rather than uh, only to a certain mall to the certain ten tenants okay the other thing which uh, we have to do is as i said build confidence and give peace of mind to our shoppers uh, thermal cameras and online contact tracing is a must at the moment and uh, to make it as um, convenient as possible now we use uh, instead of handheld thermal thermometers a lot of malls have introduced uh, thermal, thermal cameras where you just walk through without hesitation and yet your temperature is, is, is captured and with QR code uh, your contact your, your information of your visit to a particular place or mall or tenant is automatically captured so you don't need to repeatedly having your temperature taken QR code uh, every time uh, you go to a tenant space. Uh, other things that have been introduced are using ultraviolet lights to kill uh, bacteria and viruses. Uh, last time we do our ultraviolet cleaning in the night. Now we have robots roaming the shopping center, uh, showing off that uh, they are being decontaminated decontaminate, using the UV lights. So these are some of the things where the, the pandemic have made us change. Instead of hiding and doing the back, back room operations, we have now brought it to the front and uh, showing it off to build the confidence and give peace of mind to our shoppers. And uh, finally, uh, when were shopping malls go back to normal? We did. We did a survey among our shopping mall owners, operators, and most of people, the, the survey result shows that after and when the MCO is lifted, the movement control order is lifted, 10% feel that it takes three to six months to come back to normal. 58%, uh, the majority, thinks it will take six to 12 months. And I believe I, I'm in that category. And 30% thinks that it will take uh, up to one and a half years to do so. So this is the uh, feeling and this is the way we, we perceive uh, the, the time needed to get back to, to normal. However, there is still optimism. Uh, several malls are still, new malls are still being constructed. And during this challenging time, some malls have also decided to open for business. Uh, two notable ones are here called Tropicana Garden Mall and Paragon Marketplace. They are open, uh, showing there is confidence and there is enduring confidence that uh, malls are here to stay. Uh, some of the other notable retailers uh, like Mr. DIY, who is a hardware shop, uh, have decided to revive their 500 million US dollar IPO, uh, which they postponed since March. This is a very good vote of confidence, especially uh, 
the bankers are confident that uh, they can underwrite, they can get enough people to underwrite uh, their, their, their uh, issuance of these public shares. And uh, they are still opening uh, new, new stalls to meet their target and uh, of opening more stalls uh, throughout this period. So we are very glad to know that uh, there are indeed good uh, positive signs that uh, shopping malls are here to stay and that uh, our retailers, tenants are also very confident in the future of shopping malls. And uh, this is uh, where we are optimistic that uh, we will return to normal in uh, not too long a future and we hope that the COVID vaccine will come in. With that in, uh, vaccine, I'm sure more confidence will, can be built and uh, faster confidence will return and uh, faster the normalcy will come back to shopping centres. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you.